just realizing that I totally jumped over the fact that I told you guys I was choosing to apply to OBGYN for my residency choice. I was choosing to apply for my residency choice. That makes sense. <laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. I feel like it's been so long since I sat down and filmed a video. Part of me just like pushes this off because I just think my life is boring. And so yeah, I figured let's sit down and catch up. Um, so it's been a while since I filmed a video. The last one that I filmed um, and I actually like uploaded was the internal medicine video. I tried to upload as many um, videos throughout third year that I could. Um, so I hope those were helpful. I didn't get all of my rotations, but I got a lot of them. So if you're looking for, you know, a day in the life, a surgical rotation or OBGYN or PEDS, if you haven't seen them, just go ahead and check them out, um, on my channel and yeah, let's dive right in. So I, um, I finished my board exams last Monday. I took Comlex level two first, um, cause you know, I'm in DO school, so we have to take both Comlex and step. So I took Comlex level two um, in June and then I took my step two last Monday. So I haven't gotten my scores back for either exam, still waiting. Just wanna make note that for people who um, use Anki and have switched to Anki as like a main study mode, um, I know that they made um, edits to the exam. I listened to Divine Intervention podcast and I know they made edits to the exam to not be so buzzword heavy. I think a lot of people just like jumped on Anki and it's super buzzword. So, you know, you start to like learn things just by the buzzword. It seemed like the exams this year were like um, wording, like they were describing a disease and describing a buzzword, but they weren't actually saying buzzwords. So, you know, I ended up pushing step back a little bit. So just give myself like some more time through you world and um, just like getting more familiar with the descriptions of diseases and not like their actual names and things like that. So super random. Anyways, so I want to start first with some um, things I did during third year and some third year tips. So if you're in third year, you just started, I guess, a month ago. One thing I would say is um, I definitely, like, I could have studied more throughout third year that would, like, have paid off for a board studying. I feel like I very much just, like, studied for a shelf exam and then forgot about that shelf. Like, I, I kind of just did my UWorld blocks for with whatever rotation I was in. So if I was in PEDS... I was like only doing my PEDS U world or PEDS like if I was looking stuff up in Anki and then after that shelf was done I like didn't really go back to it so one thing I would suggest is like maybe keeping Anki um, keeping your cards mixed up or like maybe just still doing some like um, blocks of questions like if you did PEDS and then you move on to surgery like still throwing some PEDS questions in while you're on surgery only because by the time you take step two and complex two in the spring in like June you basically forget everything you did the previous June. So if like you started on surgery, you know, it's, it was like hard for me to remember stuff I did months and months and months ago that I didn't, I wasn't reviewing. Okay. So that's my first tip. Second tip is going to be listen to divine intervention podcast. I can't talk. If you're a podcast person, I would say, um, what I did, um, and I really started doing after surgery was I was playing, a divine intervention podcast even if it was just a bit of the episode I was playing it every single time I got in the car so if I was commuting to a rotation I'd play it on the way there and I'd play it on the way back and it was just kind of like repetition even though I would listen to the same podcast sometimes or I'd put one on that I had already heard maybe a couple weeks ago it was super beneficial to replay things and hear things for a second time so my second tip is if you like podcasts the best podcast I found for like anything no matter what rotation I was on and then even into board studying he had rapid review series so divine intervention podcast was clutch for like a daily thing to do another thing so my third tip is going to be I watched online med ed for every rotation that I was in except for surgery surgery I did pistana audio and I can like link these in the description so surgery I did pistana I listened to his audio files I think there's like 18 hours of them um so basically I kind of crammed those um, but I did Pistana and UWorld. So for every um, rotation, I always did the UWorld block. So the corresponding like um, shelf subject. But I would always do UWorld. And then for 
surgery, I did Pistana audiophiles with UWorld. And then for every other rotation, I did online, online med ed for that specific shelf. And then I also was always like listening to a divine intervention podcast. And then I did the U world. And then I found myself, I wasn't as consistent with Anki. So if you're still an Anki person, that's great. I just wasn't as consistent with it this year because I just felt like there was a lot of U world to get through. So I found myself doing questions a lot, but I would always like revert back to Anki because it's an easy search engine. So I always had it like pulled up and I would still like search something because I downloaded the updated deck. And a lot of you guys have reached out to me for that updated deck as of like today, right now. The most updated deck is that V9, V5 deck or whatever. And it's, it still keeps some of the step one stuff, but you also have step two, which is like separated. So um, I always just like searched those cards. Okay, just as I finished recording that video for you guys, I thought of something really important that I found out very late in the game. <sighs> guys, Dr. High Yield's book, this book, it's on Amazon. I found it like 30 days before my step exam from my friend Aaron who bought the, the book. I was using his for a little bit and I was like, oh, I have to buy this. Okay, this, this book is not really like sequential by any means, but it's like all the high yield stuff for each subject. Here, hold on, let me flip the camera around. Okay, so I think it's like 40 bucks on Amazon, which kudos to him because he's making a lot of money. But um, I found this super helpful, especially when I took my exam. I like underlined stuff that I saw on my complex and kind of had an idea of like stuff i should i should have read this a lot earlier anyways here's the table of contents from dr high yield so he kind of he gives you like a rough um idea of like what's in it but it's not organized really it's just kind of organized by uh subject so here's the you know and then at the very end of like each thing he kind of goes through this thing where he does like random questions like one-liners almost and then um he does this thing where he does like measurements first step stuff just like random facts um so i wanted to show you guys that because it's going to be something where it's like you're basically just reviewing because if you're not to the point where you're reviewing this can be very overwhelming but i used it the last month before my step exam and i was so happy that i used it it was so like straight cut and dry to the point like super high yield stuff and connections that like you wouldn't think to make a connection for because he writes it multiple times in the book it's literally like maybe 200 pages i don't even know it's like 260 pages it's super easy to get through i think i got through it at least once but some subjects i definitely got through more than once it's so helpful even if you have it throughout the year and you just go to the specific shelf you're studying for, it, it I'm so upset that I found it so late in the game. Anyways, I'll put that link to Amazon down below. I highly recommend it. It's going to be like the best 40 bucks you'll ever spend, I promise. A lot of you guys have started reaching out to me asking about VSAS and audition rotations. I'm not sure how it's going to go for the classes um, after, after my class because obviously the pandemic is still affecting you know, how many students pe hospitals are taking for uh, way rotations. Um, if you don't even know what I'm talking about, when you get to your fourth year, you have what's called a way or audition rotation. Sometimes they're called sub I rotations, like sub internship rotations. And um, a lot of programs go through what's called VSAS. It's like the visiting student website. If you're going into third year, don't worry about it until like March, because I think it opens in March. That's when it opened for us. It's to better your chances of getting an interview and it's to show a program like your face and you're not just on paper. So let me backtrack. I'm like, so well, I can't sit still. I feel like I have so much to say that I'm so out of breath. I'm like trying to just get this all out in like one sentence without breathing. Okay. So the main reason that um, you want to go on audition rotations is because it betters your chance of a program giving you an interview or um, seeing your face before you apply and like looking out for your application and hopefully ranking you. For me, I want to do like um, Orlando Health, okay? So they have like OBGYN, they have a maternal fetal medicine rotation, they have like um, reproductive endo rotation. I don't know all of them. I'm just kind of like winging this right now. So it's $15 per like rotation you apply for and then within that one so if you do like maternal fetal medicine and you want to apply to like june july august september october just to better chances to get picked for one of them 
that doesn't increase the price amount. The price is just dependent on each separate program. Okay. So you can apply for like six months within the same one. And that doesn't like make, that doesn't charge you $15 to add on to that. You, okay. Apply to these rotations, yada, yada, yada. You have kind of like a skeleton for fourth year, but fourth year is so random. You really only have a couple of like actual rotations you have to do. Like you have to do a rural rotation. You have to do ambulatory care rotations. You have to do an emergency medicine rotation. And then you have like electives, you still have a vacation month. So basically you're like trying to fill these spots in with audition rotations. Okay, so this is what your VSAS is kind of gonna look like. I just kind of wanted to explain a little bit of what I was talking about so it's not confusing. So here you can see you're logged in. These are the ones that I haven't submitted yet. These are the ones that are under review and then an offer I have to accept or not. And typically you have like a week to accept something. Um, so the way you'll start it is you'll go to like my application and let me blur that stuff out blah blah okay so you'll like um, upload a picture and then you'll go through all of your stuff and add um, like the requirements it's going to be like your step score your complex score um, typically your cv um, immunization forms drug screens background checks things like that then you'll go to find electives and so this was one that i just applied to you'll put your desired specialty up here um, sorry, over here, you'll put your desired specialty and then it'll show you like which ones are open and what the start date they're open for and then the last one they're offering. And just for example, you'll hit save um, or you can just go to learn more and it'll kind of tell you like, um, so here's where it's gonna tell you if you're gonna have to pay a fee to rotate there. And then this is when you know like, okay, these are all the available dates you can apply to go there for four weeks or two weeks. So I think this one, it says it's a three week rotation. Um, so it doesn't always line up with your school schedule, but you kind of like make it work in fourth year. Um, so then you'll go to my application and you'll go to add electives. I'm going to blur that all out. So you'll go to my application. You'll go to add electives. And then I think I was like in the middle of doing this one. You'll do save and continue or add electives from saves list. So that's where your ones will be that you save when you first, oh my gosh, it's getting ready to storm. When you first save them, you'll click here and you'll do add electives from saved list and you do add dates. And then here's where you put all your dates in that you're applying for. And like I was saying, each specific one, so this one's called OBGYN sub I, this is $15. Each date you add, don't take my word on this, but this is what I've seen so far each date that you add for this specific one, it's not gonna be an additional charge, it's just additional charges for each um, separate one. So let me give you a better example. So you'll go to add dates, whatever, and then you'll go to pay. But if you go back to tracking, so here's where I have to like accept my offer or whatever. But if we go back to under review, these are all the ones I've been just like, I continue to apply for, right? So here's an example. This is at Fresno, um, UC San Francisco, Fresno campus. I applied to MFM and Advanced Inpatient. So this was $15 and this was $15. But I applied to multiple um, dates for each one. So it's not a separate charge for that. You see what I'm saying? So you can like track the progress and see, you know, when your home institution clears that application that you applied for on VSAS versus when the host institution sees it and reviews it. And then when you get a decision, you can either accept that or decline it, whatever. But usually you have about a week to do uh, to make that decision. So I just kind of wanted to, go to show you what the website looks like so that those of you who are third years now and maybe watching this video or maybe second year and you're curious, um, you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. So it's not super confusing. I don't know if I've actually told you guys this. So I want to go into OBGYN. I don't know if I've announced that on my page yet, but if you watch my videos, I'm pretty sure like even when I went back and watched like my different rotations, as soon as I watched my OB rotation, I was like, okay, it's like very evident that I don't want to do anything else. Like this is what I want to do. So that's what I'm applying for this year. So that's what I apply for all my audition rotations. They're all OB rotations. Okay, I'm also editing this vlog and just realizing that I totally jumped over the fact that I told you guys I was choosing to apply to OBGYN for my residency choice. I was choosing to apply for my residency choice. That makes sense. I, I just kind of want to explain why I chose the field that I chose. Um, long, for the longest time, I wanted to go into surgery. Coming into medical school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I had some like interest from exposure 
like um, one of my brother's best friends is an ophthalmologist, so I was interested in that. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I did know that I, I thought I would like surgery. So I started off my third year with surgery. So after I had my surgery rotation, I knew I wanted to be in an OR. Um, so I was leaning a lot towards surgery, general surgery, kind of looking into programs for months, honestly. I told myself that I would never want to go into this field. It was so funny because this was like the one that I was like, oh no, I, I definitely won't like that. I know I want to be in an OR. I think I want to, I don't, I didn't know, but I was like, I'm not going to do OB. I just, I don't seem like that kind of gal. And that's honestly how I felt. <laughs> and um, my first day on the rotation, I was like, crap. I was like, I had a really bad experience shadowing an OBGYN in college. It just like was an accident that I shadowed one. And so it was just hor horrifying. Oh my gosh, I hate this field. And my, one of my best friends, um, you guys know her, V, for the longest time she thought she was gonna go into OB and we were like totally opposite people. We're alike in a lot of ways. And so that's what she wanted to go into. And I was like, mm, that doesn't seem like the kind of person I am and I'm probably never gonna go into that. And then like I said, on my first day, I was like, okay, well I just shot myself in the foot because I swore that I would never go into this field and I wouldn't like it. And I already didn't like it when I saw the field. I had no idea. To be honest, OB has, it's such a diverse field. There's so much surgery clinic as you want, but there's, there's both. And there's like the doctors that I've shadowed, especially in Georgia, there is so much surgery. They literally, their Tuesdays and Thursdays are packed full of surgery. And uh, they, they just kind of explained to me, like, you really can make your life what you want it to be. You can make your schedule what you, what you want it to be if you work hard. So that wasn't even what got me. It was really like, I literally like walked into the rotation thinking like I'm gonna hate it. And then just kind of was like, let's just do it. Let's like see what this rotation has to offer. And I found out I love working with females. Like I never knew that I would like that until I actually did it. I, I love working with females. So thinking of like a field of medicine where you basically only work with women was just not in the question. Like it just wasn't in the cards for me. And then when I did it, I was like, I love working with females. I love that I can understand them. I can empathize with them. Like this field of medicine to me, like just from my experience seemed like one of the happier fields of medicine to be in. For the most part, these women are like happy, healthy women in this field. Um, and I just like found out that I love women's health. I love advocating for my friends and female friends that have like struggled with certain things and a lot of, you know, women can't find doctors that can actually empathize with them and like i just found that wow i really have a lot of these same like struggles that i don't want to use the word girl as in like these are only girls um obviously like the gender terminology is just to like classify the field as a whole but they can be whatever they choose to be but um just speaking in general like i love women's health and i like being an advocate for women's health and uh, so many of my friends have reached out to me like now that i'm in this field and they're like oh i've been struggling with x y and z like can we talk about it? Can you educate me more on it? And I love that. I, I did not know that I had joy in this field of medicine. Um, I did not expect it at all. I did not think I was going to like it. But there's so much surgery. I love surgery. I, I literally like love the OR. I love operating. So once I did the rotation in Georgia and found out like how many surgeries you can schedule and how many um, different types of surgeries there are, like a list of surgical procedures. And it's like, that's what I love. I also love seeing these people in clinic. And I didn't even think I liked clinic, but I like clinic with this population of people. So anyways, long story short, I'm gonna try to like cut this up as best as I can. I just, it's just really funny um, how I chose this field because it was just, I was so against it. Like I was pushing so hard against it. And then finally I was like going back and forth talking to Dom and I was like, I think this is it. And he's like, I know this is it. He's like, I knew from your first day, this is what you're gonna go into. Because I kept going like, do I wanna do a surgical field? Do I wanna do OB? Maybe I like peds. Like I liked working with the kids. He's like, no, like you're going OB. And so when I finally came to the realization, like it's so true. I could not stop talking about it. I still can't stop talking about it. And it's like, it's just funny. It's like really funny because I just never thought I would go into this field. That's my why. Um, 
Okay, now I'm done talking and rambling and I'm like moving the camera so much because it's not on the stand anymore. But if you guys made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful. So sorry if this was like out of order and a little bit confusing, but I just kind of wanted to put everything together in one video that I've been wanting to talk to you guys about. Hopefully that wasn't confusing and hopefully that was the information that you guys need. So like I said, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, of course, leave a comment down below message me on instagram whatever's easiest for you guys don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and um hit the subscribe button so that when i do post a video you get a notification all right see you guys next time bye